Multimedia Library of the Alliance Française de Nairobi, soyez les bienvenus. Welcome to Mbogi Ya Ma Writers. In this edition, I'm going to be talking to Mukoma Wa Ngogi, more elaborately to Dr. Mukoma Wa Ngogi Wa Diongo. He holds a PhD in English from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He is an associate professor of English at Cornell University in the USA. He has written fiction under the titles Mrs. Shaw, Black Star Nairobi, and Nairobi Heat. Poetry under the titles Logotherapy, and hurling words at consciousness. Drama under the title, Drugs to Kill, Drug to Cure, for radio. Essays under the titles, Conversing with Africa, Politics of Change, and The Rise of the African Novel, Politics of Language, Identity, and Ownership. But this particular conversation is to focus on his latest novel, which, among other things, he is here in Kenya to launch. Its title, Unbury Our Dead with Song. Welcome to Mbogi Yamaraitas, Mokoma Wangogi. Mokoma, if I may. No, thank you very much, JSO. Mokoma. I'm going to start by reading to you mm -hmm. from your book, and I hope I won't put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. Tonight, for the first time, Ethiopian musicians were here. They were going to compete, singing the Tizita. The Tizita was not just a popular traditional Ethiopian song, it was a song that was life itself. It had been sung for generations, through wars, marriages, deaths, divorces, and childbirths. For musicians and listeners exiled in Kenya, the US and Europe, or trying to claim a home in Israel as Ethiopian Jews, the Tizita was like a national anthem to the soul, for better and worse. As I got to learn more about the Tizita, I would understand why this competition mattered to the musicians. To be crowned the winner was like being named the singer of Ethiopia's soul. So, fairly on at the beginning, mm. you have chosen to set your novel mm. in Ethiopia, mm. and yet you're a Kenyan currently living in America. Mm. Why Ethiopia? Mm. Yeah, so I, I, and to that, to, 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 th thank you for the reading. Actually, it's, it was great to hear my words in your voice. I actually think you did a better job than I would. Um, yeah, the questions of identity are complicated because with that I, that I was born in the U.S., then I grew up here, so I'd add Kenyan-American as well. Um, but why Ethiopia? I just happened to fall in love with this song. It's, it's, it, it, it's a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the Tizita, but it's, it's a song that's sung by pretty much all serious musicians, right? And it's a song that was handed down from generation to generation from Asmaris, right? It has a very strict form. Um, yeah, but I happened to be at a party somewhere in, in Boston when I heard this song. And then I spent years looking for it because those, those were the days of, of, of CDs and tapes. Uh, so, so it took me a while to find this song. It took me about 10 years to finally find this song. And when I found this song, the, the initial emotions or the, you know, uh, came back to me on first hearing this song. So, so there's a line in the book where, where it says, when you hear your tizita, you'll know it because you will fall in love with it. So, so that, that's all that happened. I listened to this song, 
and deeply fell in love with it, became obsessed. I, I, I spent three or four, three, four, five years listening to this song over and over again, right, uh, obsessively. Yeah, so I would, I would say I just happened to fall in love with the Tizita. Um, but as a Kenyan, though, what I, what, what I couldn't do, or as a Kenyan-American, whatever multiple identities that we all carry, uh, what I couldn't do was explain the Tizita to Ethiopians, right? You know, so, so, so the character, the, the main character, John Manfredi, the, um, you know, the journalist, the investigative journalist who is looking for this song, he's very much well aware that he's an outsider, right? So, 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 so you get to see, and there, he has limitations. He doesn't speak Amharic. I mean, neither do I. I don't speak any Ethiopian languages. So, so it's very, very clear that he, he also has his limitations. Um, you know, but the easy answer would be, you know, um, you know, Ethiopia is a neighbor. <laughs> no, the reason, so, 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 the, the reason, so, so, so it's like visiting a neighbor, yeah. The reason why I put that question to you, yeah. Wakoma, is this whole idea, the wider debate uh, about appropriation, uh, which yeah. is very, very current, yeah. which basically, uh, if we, one can summarize it, uh, is that the only person who has the right uh -huh. to approach a subject must have some form of uh -huh. ownership. Yeah. And people take great umbrage if, for example, a mm -hmm. white American mm -hmm. writer has the audacity mm -hmm. to chronicle the black experience. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking, simply by being black, mm -hmm. the two of us, yeah. does it give you uh, the go-ahead mm -hmm. to deal with a Nigerian topic just because you're African? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know at, at a fundamental level, as a scholar, right? For example, if you look at my scholarship, The, the Race of the African Novel, I look at African-American literature, you know, I look at... Um, Nigerian literature, and then of course, you know, the Kenyan literature, and so on and so forth. No, I, I do believe we should give ourselves the permission, right, uh, to read and study and write about other cultures, right? The problem becomes when there's a power imbalance, right? You know, so in, in the US, the debate is around. I, I, oh, yeah, if you guys are interested, you can find this online. I wrote an article uh, called, uh, like, it was, the, the title was supposed to be funny, but something to the effect of, um, a, 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 like a concise guide to white writers about how they can write about black characters and some of the things I did with this book. Yes, and, and, and I, I, I was studying that as a joke, actually, right? Then you occur to me, okay, why don't I, you know, because some people are trying to write from, from a place of, of, of goodness, let me put it that way, right? Why, why don't I just sit down and as a writer and, and as a scholar who thinks about these issues, why don't I just give advice that I think would be useful? Uh, and, and, and part of the advice is honesty, right? You, you have to be honest with your own limitations. Don't think you're writing for the people, right? So, but anyway, but, but I do believe deep down in this question, there's a question of power, right? You know, so um, me, just, you know, just a Kenyan dude, you know, going into Ethiopia and wanting to write about the music, I, th I think it's very, very different uh, from a white person uh, who, um, you know, who traditionally has had power. So, so I, I wouldn't leave power of the equation. Can I appropriate? Um, yeah, I, I can appropriate, yeah, I can. Um, if, I, if, if I don't write honestly, right? If, if, I, if I decide to write about the Tizita as, I'm gonna explain to Ethiopians what the Tizita means to them, or, uh, you know, or even, you know, the jokes around mansplaining and, you know, and, and all that stuff, right? Uh, but, but, really, I, but really, the challenge here is to just write honestly. Uh, whether you're a scholar or a writer or a musician, just be honest, you know, and, and, and be vulnerable with your own, uh, or understand your own vulnerabilities and limitations. I think understanding your own limitations uh, is very, very important. Thank you. I'd like mm. to spread that a wee bit to the Kenyan mm. context in particular. You mean you want to unpack it? Yes, indeed, <laughs> yes. Unpack it a bit further and yeah. say, would you, uh, as you are, yeah. Uh, Ngugi, uh, yeah. they'll say, oh, he's Ngugi Wathiongo's son. Yeah. Would you take that and say, within yeah. the con Kenyan context, yeah. are you a Kenyan writer yeah. or are you a Kikuyu writer uh -huh. writing in English? Uh, this oh, ide yeah, yeah. identity yeah. Within, yeah. within the whole. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely a Koyo, right? Like I said, I was born in the US, but I grew up here. I grew up in Limuru. In fact, when coming from Naivasha, one of the pleasantries was seeing the landscape where I grew up. I mean, it's it's... I'm a Gekoyo, right? Um, but I, I don't believe that if I write as Gekoyo, and there is, okay, to, to, talking about the Kenyan setting, there is this idea that if you write in, an, in, a, in a Kenyan language, you know that you're spreading ethnicity, right? Where you're, you're seen as a nationalist. No, it's our languages, right? 
and 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 the most and the most natural thing which I'm which I'm not doing because I'm writing in English, and and there's some pain for me in that. Uh, but the most natural thing is to is to write in your language, right? You write from where you are. You write from you write from your culture. Uh, but with that said, I definitely do take pride in calling myself a Kenyan writer, right? Uh, because in reality, uh, when I look at all the, the, the other books that I've written, they get their imaginative muscle, right? They get their imaginative muscle from Kenya. Um, you know, some of the things I experienced, you know, growing up as Goge's son, you know, a lot of trauma, I should add, right? Um, but, but all those things that, that I'm writing from uh, are Kenyan, right? Um, but I would add, because of now having lived in the U.S. for over half my life, actually, I went there when I was 20, I'm 50 now, uh, that I've had to think about blackness itself, right? So I've, I've had to think about being Kenyan. Uh, I've had to say, even though people might say, you know, that, uh, you know, that I've lived abroad too long, I've, I've, I've just had to, claim, I've, I've, I've had to claim the Kenyan identity for myself and say nobody's going to tell me if I'm Kenyan or not. Uh, but at the same time, I've had to claim an American identity, a, a black identity. So, in fact, the book I'm writing now uh, is on the, the relationship between Africans and African Americans. So, I would say I would say we start from somewhere, right? But but we have to we have we have to acknowledge our complexities. No, not to talk for too long. But I, I did a DNA test actually, right? Um, and the reason I did a DNA test was because I believe, and, and, and I was proven correct, of course. The, the history we learned in, in primary school, I don't know if it's still accurate, <laughs> you know. But the, the great migrations from uh, from Southern Africa, right? Uh, all the way to Eastern Africa and so on and so forth. So, you know, and yet, because I'm very conscious of, of Wekoyo nationalism, I, I, I wanted to do the DNA test to show, at least to show that we don't have, a, we, think, we think because we are, we are black or we think because we are Kenyans or we think because we are Kikuyu or Lu, that our identities are stable. Anyway, my DNA test came back and as, as, as expected, most, most of it was from uh, Southern Africa all the way to the, to the Congo. Uh, and to my point, oh, and this is maybe that this is why I can't appropriate Ethiopian culture. <laughs> it turned out I'm something like 11 to 20 percent Ethiopian and like 9 percent Somali, right? So, so even though somebody will look at me and say that that's a Moge Koyo, right? They will say that's a Moge Koyo. Uh, the reality of who I am is that already, that even, even though you look at me and say I'm Moge Koyo, it's already very, very complex. And, and, and as the DNA gets, the DNA testing, um, as they populate it more and more and more, I think we will realize just how uh, complex our identities are. But then within that, within that definition, mm. there's the whole idea of, of language. You mm. are a Mugikuyu because mm -hmm. you don't speak any other language. Mm -hmm. You don't speak Amharic. You don't speak mm -hmm. Tigrania. Therefore, mm -hmm. uh, forget all the mm -hmm. DNA zooming mm -hmm. up and down. It's the language that's defining mm -hmm. surely Mukam. Mukam. Um, it's the language. Uh, definitely language is important, right? Uh, you know, as, as Goge says, you know, language carries our culture, our history, right? Um, and I, I, I do like the fact that I speak Gekoyo, right? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm glad I grew up speaking Gekoyo uh, because there's a certain loss, right? Especially for, you know, for, for, for people in my generation who grew up in Nairobi, you know, I mean, there, there's something, there's, there's a loss and, and also something that's just plain ridiculous, right? that when you go speak to your grandmother, <laughs> you, you need a translator, right? I mean, so, 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 so maybe the question is not so much about um, my, my being more Gekoyo and speaking and speaking, speaking Gekoyo. I think maybe the question is, like, what have we done to ourselves, right? Like, what have we done to ourselves to celebrate? You know, because we do celebrate, we do celebrate that alienation, right? Uh, you'll hear parents who are, who are proud that their kids uh, don't speak, you know, don't speak a Kenyan language. But with that said, I, I, this is something I was talking with, with Kemani Jogu, that, that, that I've seen uh, with different generations, different relationships to Kenyan languages, right? You know, so uh, definitely for my father's generation, they were all pro-English, right? They, some of them might have changed later, like my dad, right? Um, but they grew up within what, in, in, in my book, I call the English metaphysical empire, right? And they believed it, and they, you know, they swallowed it whole, so to speak. Uh, then you have my generation in the 1970s, where we, we grew up with the same attitude towards Kenyan languages. But with the younger generation, and people here can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but, but I think for the younger generation, for them they don't have the same hang-ups, right, uh, with, with, with Kenyan languages, you know. Um, you know, and we're speculating and saying, 
I, 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 think, I think the closer you are to colonialism, right, the more messed up. <laughs> I mean, for lack of a better word, I, I used a stronger word. <laughs> so the closer, the closer your generation is to colonialism, the more messed up we are, yeah? Okay, I'm going to turn to, we, we said at the beginning, we're going to mm. talk about uh, the book itself for the yeah. greater part. Uh, so there's a sort of philosophy that you bring to the process. Mm. Unbury our dead with song. Mm. Why the title? Did you choose it? We went back and forth with the editor. So the editor um, chose the title. I think the original title I, I, the, the original title I had was... Um, uh, we sing the Tizita. Okay, I guess the only change was, you know, we sing our Tizita, right? So, so, so I think my, the original title was We Sing Our Tizita to Unbury Our Dead with Song, right? So it's an abbreviation of that. Uh, but it's something the characters, like the whole book really is captured by, you know, by the song because with the Tizita and listening to it, uh, the question that I was left with was, you know, I'm, I'm very much aware of my mortality, right? I mean, it's, it's inevitable that all of us here will die. Like, that's, you know, that's just a fact. Um, so then what remains of us, right? What will remain of us, you know, 10 years, you know, 20, maybe hopefully 40, right? But what will remain of us? And there, there's a scene in the book where the character, um, you know, goes to a graveyard, right? Um, this happened to me in real life. You know, I, I was living in, a, in an apartment where behind uh, there was a graveyard, right? that had been abandoned, you know. So I would, I would, go, out, I'd, yeah, I would go there to have a beer, you know, <laughs> let's say it was very peaceful. Um, yeah, so, but then I started looking at, 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 the, at the grave, what are they called, the, the stones, right? And some of them were from the, like, I don't know, like the 1600s, 1700s, you know, and, and the graves have been left, you know, un, uh, untended, right? So, so, so yeah, and, and, but you can imagine how, you know, we hold on to our, grave, to our graveyards and so on and so forth. But eventually, almost without a doubt, unless you're a president where they do the burning flame, the eternal burning flame, <laughs> but, but, but it, in the end, we'll all be in these graves where that are, that are overgrown and so on and so forth. So what remains, right? Uh, and for those who are here now, how can they connect with those who have left? You know, and, and, and that becomes, when you're hearing the Tizita, then you're hearing these echoes, you're hearing this music uh, that, you know, th that those people in the intended graves were listening to. So, so it becomes a way of unbarring. Right. Uh, of the, unbarring, the whole, yeah. The whole yeah. nation, the, there's a meditational thing going on yeah. right across the book. Yeah. But I am yeah. going to now mm. uh, adopt mm. the sort of hook mm -hmm. of imagining that mm -hmm. I am a school teacher mm -hmm. teaching your book. Mm -hmm. It's got into these exalted climbs, mm -hmm. it's a said book, mm -hmm. and any number of thousand of Kenyan mm -hmm. kids are reading it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've sorted out the idea of uh, where you got your title from. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to go back into this idea of structure. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got several musicians, mm -hmm. and they're all into a competition. And we won't give too much away. Yeah. We, won't, we won't sort of, we won't, we won't uh, the, bo the, the book, book is yeah. here, the book is here to be bought. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking around the book. Uh, yeah. But you, you know your structure. Mm. Why mm. the une unevenness of structure? Mm. Why does the corporal mm. get more than Miriam? Mm. Why does Miriam get less than... Mm. Would, than the yes. yeah. So if you're mm. giving a master class about writing, mm. yeah. yep. if, if I ignore you in a conversation yeah. and talk to somebody else, Mm -hmm. By definition, you're mm -hmm. a lesser being mm -hmm. to my perception. So uh, why yeah. don't your characters yeah. have equal... When I was being really uh, anal about it, uh, yeah. uh, I sort of said, um, mm -hmm. okay, the diva uh, mm -hmm. went from page 75 to page yeah. 140. Yep, so yeah. the diva's really, you know, you're running yeah. on the diva. Uh, yeah. The Taliban man goes from page 141 to page 175. Yeah. Yeah. But by the time we get to the corporal, He's doing page 176 to page 211. Yeah. You had all this time to write. Uh, yeah. Why didn't you give them equal footage? Yes. Yeah, so Are some characters mm. more important than others? Um, I would say definitely, definitely for, um, for, for the narrator, right? I, I, I think the narrator falls in love with, um, with the diva. And I would say maybe for myself as well. I mean, I, one of the best known musicians, um, digital musicians, my name is Bezawalk, right? Oh yeah, so, so, so you can find the music I was listening to as I was, as I was writing the book. You can just Google my name and uh, Tizita playlist, you'll find it. Uh, yeah, but I will spend hours listening to Bezawalk, right? But, but not, not, not her music, but her interviews, even though, I, I, again, like I said, I don't speak Amharic. So, 
so, so in a way, you could say I fell in love with Beza Hawk, and consequently, John Mafredi, uh, the, 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 the narrator, fell in love with um, with the diva. Um, so, so, so that's one, right? Uh, but I would, but I would say it, it's something the publisher also picked up and asked why the unevenness, right? But, but, I, but I think it's it's almost like you're trying to hurt something, right? It's all, to my mind anyway, right? It's almost like so you, so you have to look at the tizita from different angles, right? Um, but there's a question there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, there is a question uh, which you yeah. must make clear to the school teacher who's uh, teaching the book. Yeah, yeah. Is the Tizita uh, uh, the same song uh -huh. s sung in different ways, uh -huh. or is it an art form like uh -huh. the blues? Because you've just oh, mentioned one, yeah, and yeah. you also mentioned Asta Aweke. Now, yeah. if we're in Kenya, just one moment, uh -huh. if we're in Kenya, uh -huh. Asta Aweke came uh -huh. to Nairobi uh -huh. and performed. Mm -hmm. And I had the great privilege of seeing her perform. Yeah. So the art form which she mm -hmm. was manifesting mm -hmm. was the Tizita. If yeah, there's a competition, yeah. are mm -hmm. these people trying to sing the yeah. same song yeah. so, or the same so, play okay. different things? Okay. So so again, this is what this is why like you have all these characters trying to, you know. So so for 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 Manfredi, uh, he's trying to get to the Tizita through different um, through the different characters, and at some level, actually, you could say that. Uh, that the novel it fails, and I'm not saying fail in a bad way, right? I'm saying in the end, uh, you, you first you need the participation of the of the of the reader, right, to read and and, and hear and to hear the song through words. To my mind, it's both, and this is where again, you know, Ethiopians might disagree, but to my mind, it does both. It, it's one song, right? It's one song, uh, but with different interpretations, right? So you can have like the Taliban man, you know, you can have. Uh, like so, some sort of hip hop interpretation of the song, right? You can have a bluesy interpretation, you can have a broody interpretation, and so on and so forth. So, so, but, 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 but the thing that the thing that defines it all is that it's. I, I think in the novel I use the word containment, right? Right. So, yeah. So, 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 yeah, so, 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 it's not about it's not about singing, you know, in, 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 in you know, and hitting high notes and so on and so forth. The one thing that that, that conjoins uh, all, all the all the Tizita musicians, to my mind, is that they have to give themselves to the song, right? And and, and that was that's very, very 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 difficult to convey. Yeah, but they, they have to give themselves and be humble and be vulnerable to the song. And what is surprising about them, you know, like you mentioned, Asta, right? Uh, when you listen to her Tizita, you can hear that containment. It's almost like you're listening to the inside of a grenade, right? So so the power is in the containment. You know, then then you get surprised later when you listen to us and realize, you know, she can go Whitney Houston. Uh, for the young people here, she was a she was a musician. I know I'm joking. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, you realize she can go Whitney Houston on the high notes, right? Uh, so so for them, yeah. So so I think for the musicians, and this is now me listening, right? It becomes about content. It's like, like, like a sonnet, right? You know, yeah. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, yeah. uh, we'll study the book in school um, yeah. uh, beyond the author. Yeah. I'm going to read you another passage yeah. to give yeah. uh, our, mm. our, our, our viewers a feel mm. for, for your yeah. writing. Yeah. And here is this, uh, the, the, mm. the protagonist is a yeah. journalist. Yeah. And he studied uh, abroad. Yeah. He's got his degrees. And uh, we'll get onto the ideas of sub-themes later. Mm. But... Having been to the competition, mm. he there is this idea of uh, making things up. Mm -hmm. When he actually oh, yeah. begins, <laughs> when he begins to write mm. for the National Inquisitor, mm -hmm. uh, with you know sort of throwbacks for the National Enquirer, yeah. I thought in that mm -hmm. in your culture, mm -hmm. this is what he writes. He goes, so he's been to the competition. Yeah. He yeah. says, "Sex, drugs, and rock and roll to Zeta." Mm -hmm. At the popular white and black bourgeoisie Norfolk Hotel, mm -hmm. a secret competition was held away from the eyes of you, the common Kenyan. Mm -hmm. It started off as a simple affair, a competition to find out who amongst top Ethiopian mm -hmm. musicians could give the best rendition mm -hmm. of the Tizita, mm -hmm. a popular song over there. But according to our whistleblower account, one soon to be named Kenyan tycoons got wind of it they decided to open up the competition to all musicians and what was supposed to be a story about trying to find the soul mm. in music became one of corruption, sex mm. and drugs. Mm. Am I, mm. as a Mwalimu in the classroom, mm -hmm. thinking that Mukoma Wangogi says mm. that there is no truth out there and everything mm. is up for grabs 
to be mm -hmm. our, our, the nation, the standard, mm -hmm. the star are mm -hmm. all tabloids. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm <laughs> going to tell the kids you're trying to say? Well, I mean, it's so, so for me, it's a bit complicated because I grew up in, um, you know, like I said, in, in the 1970s, right? So that's when we had the Kenyatta government. Uh, then also the 1990s when we had the Moi government. Okay, so, so, so in those days, really, like the nation, they were tabloidish, right? It, to, to the extent, I'm not saying they wrote, you know, like juicy tabloid stories, mm. but to the extent they had um, a very loose relationship to the truth, right? Um, and I'm saying, is this an empirical statement that you're making as an author? Yeah, so, so but, but, um, but for him or the character, I, I couldn't make him, I didn't feel I could make him, you know, like a real journalist, because he needed to he needed to go into those city places, right? And he needed to be unreliable. Um, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so, so for him, it, it, yeah, it, yeah, so he writes this juicy, I mean, he's a tabloid writer. But I, I should add, though, that for him, um, he's not just a tabloid writer, but he's a, the, the child of, uh, of parents who worked and perhaps even slept with Moi, let me put it that way, right? The Moi, the Moi dictatorship. So, so he's coming from those sort of families, right? And, 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 now, and let me go off on a tangent a little bit because it's an interesting story. Um, so, and the reason why I was, I was thinking of Manfred, the main character that way, uh, is because years ago, we're talking about the 2000s, I was living in Atlanta, you know, and I met this, uh, this, this woman who, whose father was part of the people uh, who put my father into detention, right? You know, her father was part of that chain, right? And, and what I remember from that meeting it, at first, it's almost like she wanted my forgiveness, which of course it wasn't mine to give, right? Uh, but it was the pain, right? The pain, you know. And and, and before that, it never occurred to me, you know. It, it never occurred to me that um, that as, as we are, you know, as as we are, you know, my dad was being put in detention and exile and all all the stuff we went through. Uh, it never occurred to me how the other kids, you know, that I'll see Mercedes Benzes, <laughs> you know, living the good life, you know, how how psychologically how psychologically they were. So when he came to creating the character, I had, that's what I gave him, right? So, so he, he has to work for a tabloid, you know, to go into those city places. At the same time, he has to come from the elite family, where indeed, uh, if you believe him, where indeed he would see the sex and the drugs. And, and if you're coming from the Moi era, though, I mean, it's, you know, I, <laughs> you know those are the stories we grew up hearing anyway, right? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw you on the mm. fact, but the, these are the, the, the subtexts. You yeah. also have to do some research because yeah. having chosen uh, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, mm -hmm. you're going into the Eritrean war, mm -hmm. you're, people are digging oh, caves yeah, yeah. and dungeons. Yeah. Now, again, you've just said, I don't speak, uh, I'm Harik, I'm not Tigrayan, but you've chosen to plunge yourself into a history which isn't intrinsically mm -hmm. your own. How yeah, do you, how yeah. do you so, so, yourself on that one? So again, let, let, let me tell you another story, um, and it, it happens in the novel as well. Uh, so I said, I, I, I passed her at Tizita, in, uh, in, sorry, not in Ethiopia, but in, um, in Boston, right? So, but then, back then with a friend of mine, uh, we used to go to this pub called Charles River Pub, it's in the novel. And at Charles River Pub, it was mostly uh, Eritreans and Ethiopians, this is the early 2000s, right? And, but that's where we'd hang out, the beer was cheap, you know, great conversations, you know, before we go elsewhere. But what I do remember, though, um, is when the war between Eritrea and Ethiopia broke out, this is again the 2000s, when it broke out, people who before, you know, were sitting down, you know, and laughing and enjoying each other, right, they would each sit on their own separate corner of the bar, which again, it, this is not in the novel, but it, but it was, I was thinking about it when, um, when the post-electoral post violence started happening in Kenya in 2007, right? Again, it was the same thing, you know, people across ethnicities, you know, you could, you know, Kikuyus who are friends with Luos and so on and so forth, you know, just stop talking to each other, right? Or you'd hear, you know, Kikuyu nationalists raising money, and these are professors as well, raising money for Mugeki. Anyway, so, 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 so those things... I'll cut you short. I'll yeah. cut you short in the sense that as mm -hmm. a writer, mm -hmm. 
as a writer, uh -huh. remember that in the far-flung days when we couldn't mm. criticize the Moy regime or the Kenyatta yeah. regime, and we did plays that yeah. were set in South Africa, uh -huh. we did Waza Alpert, we did Death and the Maiden, simply yeah. because the special branch couldn't work out the yeah. similarities. Yeah. Are you doing uh -huh. the same thing? Is Ethiopia a proxy no, for no, Kenya? No. Well, definitely, and not a proxy, not a proxy, you know, because I'm, I'm truly uh, invested in, I mean, that's all I listen to even till today, the Tizita music. Um, no, it's, it's, not, it's not a proxy, but definitely, you know, it's, it's also about Kenya, right? You know, it, so it, you could argue it's half Kenyan and half Ethiopian. Um, but, but, what, what was the, but when I was writing the novel, it would never have occurred to me, of course, for Ethiopians, it would have. Uh, it wouldn't have occurred to me that Ethiopia would be where it is now with the, you know, with the Tigray forces and uh, the Oromo, you know, and the Amharas and so on and so forth. You know, and I have to say that has been very heartbreaking, right? Of, you know, so, so, so if, if for me as a Kenyan as well, you know, but, but the whole idea of, um, of you know, of how, of, of how little African life matters to Africans, right? You know, Oh yeah, so yeah, and, and then going back to the Eritrean uh, Ethiopian war in the 2000s, it was trench warfare. It was just you know thousands and thousands of people dying. You know that's what we are seeing today. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, but it, yeah, yeah. So 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 that so I'm very very much thinking about that, especially now. You know that I've written the book about you know the Tizita and yeah, in booking, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Kenyan thread, Mukoma, ha, uh, yeah. has a fascination for me in, yeah. in another way when you talk yeah. about Kenya, because uh -huh. you're going off with a father, a father-son relationship, uh, yeah. And yeah. you have this very poignant scene uh -huh. where, again, not mm -hmm. to give things away, yeah. But a, a son is interrogating mm -hmm. the, f the, the 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 father, uh, yeah. And I said to myself again, in terms yeah. of authorship, yeah. I said. Mm. Is there a mm. personal, is yeah. Mukoma juxtaposing his mm. own life into his characters? Now, if we read yeah. about the mythology, mm. people like Philip Roth yeah. and all these guys, yeah. they spend yeah. all their time, we have a chat yeah. with you, yeah. Yeah. and next minute you're in chapter five of my novel, and uh, Philip Roth's wife wants to mm. uh, divorce him. <laughs> uh, w would you find that there are people in your novel mm. Who wouldn't speak to you again because you've written about them? No, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, you know, but but you know, but certainly in the father father son relationship in the novel is, is also influenced, you know, by my own relationship to my father, right? Um, you know, especially um, now 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 we are you know you know I'm fifty, he's eighty four, so all that it, it, it's it's in it's in the past. Um, yeah, but he wasn't easy growing up when he was in exile, right? Um, you know, because we're the ones who are getting the brunt of the, you know, of, of the Moy regime, you know, while he was in exile. Yeah, so, so, so there were definitely some questioning, you know, that, I, that, that we had to do, right, um, in the 1990s when we first met, because he went into exile in 1982. Uh, we didn't meet again until the, the year 2000. No, yeah, I think 1990. Anyway. Right, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean yes. I'll, I'll forgive you the, the self-revelation. It's not, it's not necessary, no, 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 it's not no, necessary no, no. for this conversation. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I would ask, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, you've, you've... No, 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 but I'm telling a story. Yes, okay, yeah. okay, do you want to hear this story or yeah. not? No, do. I, it's just that I, I don't want you to bear your soul <laughs> no, no, to no, the camera. No, 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 That's no, not no, the yeah, point. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 it's part of the... Okay, okay, go ahead, actually. No, no do, do bear your soul. You wish to. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so you have that sort of, that, that sort of question, you know, and that how it... I think all intergenerational relationships end up that way with that sort of tension. Um, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to now address mm -hmm. from my little notebook here the mm -hmm. question of, 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 of language. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are, uh, I, I want to start off about a style of writing that you uh, adopt. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's a bit too long, I'll cut it short. Okay. And then we'll go back to a sort of juxtaposition mm. in style. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asks a question, and mm. uh, that sound is more than rhythm. Sound mm. is everything. The mm. soul. The soul? Isn't that a bit vague, I asked? Because it is unknown. We want to call it unknown, because that is easy. Think about the first death, the Tizita. To me, for me, is that sound of the first death the recognition and the surprise and the realization, that first consciousness that realized it was going to be no more, 
and it wanted to leave a message in a bottle that becomes me and you. Mm-hmm. With the Tazita, I can feel it, I know it, but I cannot speak it. Mm-hmm. And then, so that's uh, lyric, you know, you could, uh, you could well be, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the author of logotherapy. Mm-hmm. And then in chapter <laughs> 21, mm-hmm. we're in an orgy. Mm-hmm. And in the orgy, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. basically for, for, for the Kenyan public, uh, we're not going to read that section yeah. because it's going to be blitzed out and nobody's going to, you know. Yeah. But yeah. why the but, switch? But why? Why? That's what, why you, get, you need to read the book for yes, the orgy yeah, scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we, have, we have to read the book. But in terms, in yeah. terms, in terms of craft, mm-hmm. uh, why mm-hmm. this very sort of mm-hmm. sordid, vivid mm-hmm. language depicting mm-hmm. sex? Uh, condoms, uh, uh, dildos, yeah. confetti, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and then there you are as a latter-day sort of, I don't know, uh-huh. uh, um, writer of yeah. sonnets. Why yeah. did you do that? Yeah, are, so are you trying to... No, the, the more uh, direct question to the writer uh, yeah, yeah. is, are you trying to corner the market for everybody? Uh-huh. There's something in it in this book. There's a bit of, there's a bit of laughter, there's a bit of fun. It's all in there. You no, know, so, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, so... Um, I think for me it was all about the characters, right? You know, so, so the scene you read is actually one of my favorite scenes to read as well. Uh, because that's when, that's when the, the corporal is trying to explain what to him the Tizita means. And then he goes on to say that, um, you know, that for him the Tizita is almost like a 200,000 uh, human archive of, of emotion and so on and so forth, right? Um, but, but with the scene, with the orgy scene, it's the Taliban man, you know, they're this young, dynamic, um, a group of people, they're all friends, right? Um, you know, the Taliban man is, he's a very a, extremely gifted musician, right? But anyway, um, here they are, they're all the, the young people who, you know, are doing well, you know, successful in, ter- in terms of jobs and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're into music, they're into each other, right? So, so f- and, 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 I, and for me, I started thinking, for them, sex doesn't mean what sex means to, you know, to, 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 let's say even to people to, of, of my generation, right? Uh, for them, sex is friendship, right? So, so even when they have the orgy, uh, which it, I'll say it was fun to write. <laughs> so, 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 so when they have the orgy, you know, they just go back, they just go back to playing music, right? Nobody's saying, let's get married. They, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, 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 it's another form of fun for them. They're, okay, let me put it this way. They are liberated. Uh, in ways, that, you know, that, yeah, that, 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 actually, I should add in ways that I'm not, yeah, myself, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, so we have do, covered the orgy scene. We, we've covered the orgy, and, 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 and indeed, we, we've led people to the orgy scene. You, your sales might rise as a result. Uh, Mukoma, there, there's, we have to go back to the, the mm. trajectory of, mm. of, of you mm. uh, as we draw to a close as a writer. Mm. Uh, when I began, there was this whole list of mm. uh, novelist, fiction, mm. yeah. uh, and having, I think, of the titles that I mentioned, mm. I, I have read Nairobi Heat, mm. yeah. so I've read that. Mm. I'd like to say whether there is a progression and mm. a plan for you as a writer, mm-hmm. or will the next novel be mm-hmm. completely, do you mm. have an agenda? No, no, I don't. Um... But I do have a plan. I do have a plan at some, at some point to write uh, the trequel. Is it called a trequel? Mm. To Nairobi, because I, 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 Nairobi hit them, Blacks Nairobi, Nairobi and, then, uh, and then one more, right? Uh, and I, I always wanted to write popular fiction as a homage to, again, talking about, you know, in this case, orgies and pornography. David Mailu. Have, have you guys read David Mailu? Indeed. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so Nairobi hit is a homage to. Kenyan to David, public, yes. Yeah, to David Milo, Mejam Wangi, John Kariamete, like popular Kenyan fiction writers. But I, but I always plan to do three. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like to express myself in different genres uh, because I think it leads you to different places. Like, I, I don't think, for example, if I, if I had, um, you know, in, 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 in this book, if I had it where the, you know, where, where I had it, like things fall apart. Let me put it that way, right? Or, or you know, a grain of wheat. <laughs> you know, like, like that sort of serious, you know, serious uh, African literature. I don't think it would have taken me to the places I went, right? So, so I think different genres take me to different places. You know, with Nairobi Heat, I'm, I'm able to explore, um, you know, Africans and African Americans, right? With the book I'm writing now, uh, I've, been, I've been traveling around. You know, I was in Ghana visiting slave sites. I was in... I, I, a few months ago, I drove across the U.S., you know, going to, looking at, um, 
you know, muse, African American museums and stuff like that, right? Because that, that genre, that sort of memoirish, scholarly genre is demanding I do that sort of research. Yeah, so I'll say each genre takes me to a different place, yeah. But I, again, on, on the whole idea of, of message, here mm. am I, remember, mm. I'm a mwalimu and I'm teaching, yeah. and I'm teaching yep. your book. Mm. Uh, and are you trying to tell us something about ourselves as human beings? Mm. Because let, let's go back to your corporal. Mm. Now, the corporal is your book, you know it better than I do. Mm. But just from reading it once, mm. he's somebody who's creating magnificent tzitzita. Mm. Yeah. But on another level, everybody's mm. saying that he is fake, Mm -hmm. and he could well be a war criminal. Mm -hmm. And at least to my reading, I didn't in depth, mm -hmm. it's not utterly resolved at the end of it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is yeah. there, mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. something which is redemptive in all of us, mm -hmm. in the sense that you can be a mass murderer mm -hmm. and yeah. still alive to the mm -hmm. notion of beauty? Mm -hmm. So Hitler could have been a really nice guy and You're... played the Tzitzita. Is that what I should tell my kids no, no, when no, they no. write the essay? But, but, they, what does the author, you know, but, 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 by all admissions, Hitler was a terrible painter, yeah. right? Or George Bush, you know, in the U.S. is a terrible painter, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but he, he, he gets to play this no, president yeah, and kings. No, no, people we, sit before him, old Bush. Yeah, but but it, I I think with the corporate is the whole idea of uh, of complexity of identity, and the whole idea that we can't write people off, right? Okay, so again to tell you a story from my from my own family. Um, one of my uncles was in the was in the Mau Mau, right? And then the other one was a home guard, right? So there are two brothers, you know, with in, in opposite side in opposite sides. You know, but still, but still though they had to meet, right? Either at funerals or weddings and so on and so forth, right? So and and and, and, and in Kenya we know how we feel about home guards, right? Uh, at least if you're closer to the independence generation, right? Which is, which by the way I find very unfair, you know, because it's a it's a title that gets inherited. Um, yeah, so yeah, but, but we, I guess the point, the point is we can't write people off, you know, like to give you the answer, we, we just can't. Um, you know, okay, should our criminal be punished? Yeah, I believe George Bush should be in jail. I believe Obama should be in jail. That's not very popular to say. But, but you know, yeah, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of blood on their hands. Uh, but, but even then, though, we can't, write, we, can't write, we can't write human beings off. But, but at the heart of it, though, at the heart of it, what I'd like to see is us holding African life uh, with, more, with more love and more, and with more love, let me just put it that way, right? You know, because dying, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and if COVID has taught us anything, right, is, is how vulnerable uh, we are, right? Uh, so, but my, but my hope would be somebody will read, will read the novel and, and just start, you know, feeling, um, of course, there are material questions of class, you know, and, and you know, and dictatorships, and, and and so on and so on and so forth. But but I do think at the heart of it, there there, there is a way in which we don't hold African life ourselves. Uh, we don't embrace it. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think um, time is not on our side. We have to mm -hmm. end the way we always end, mm -hmm. which is to ask you um, mm -hmm. for three stock questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is. Um, what do you read? Mm -hmm. What do you read when you're not writing and mm -hmm. bury our dead with song and other? Yeah, so, so I teach. I teach literature, right? Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, so, so, so that's what I do, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so in this semester we are doing books like uh, Woman at Point Zero. Um, actually, I'm jet lagged, that's all I can remember. Or maybe that's how far, how far removed I am from it. But, but, but I, I do like keeping up with the news. You know, I like to keep up with what's happening in the world. Um, you know, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to think of other books that, that are, you know. Well, what kind of, do you, yeah. auto, I, you know, biography, do you always oh, sort of, oh, no, yeah, what, so, what, what is your preferred? Oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah mm, no, 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 no I, I, go, I go through stages, right, there was a time, um, okay, so the best advice I ever had from somebody about reading uh, is to read, in, to read in groups, right, you know, so if you're interested in the Vietnam War, then read as much as you can about that. Right. Um, so, but, but but I go through stages where I need different genres as well, you know. So, so there, there was a time I went I went through a biography, a biography phase that lasted a few years, a fiction phase, a poetry phase, and but what I don't know is whether it's related to it, whether whatever I'm reading is related to what I'm writing. Um, 
Yeah, but yeah, but there's some great memoirs out there. Um, the one I'm remembering right now is Gillian Slovos, but I can't remember the title. Uh, Gillian Slovos, um, beautiful bio uh, memoir. Um, yeah, so but 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 also memoirs of either African Americans or, or people who are who are doing political work, uh, or African or African political activists. Okay, so uh, the next question is: When do you read? When do you find time mm -hmm. to read with you, Mukomo Anguke? So I, I, when I when I travel, and this this was this was what I would say this was a COVID casualty for me, because traveling that's when that's when I would be able to read. I also travel a lot, right? You know, because then you're in a plane, or you, you know, you're, or your plane has been delayed. I, I don't know. There are all these spaces where I could just read. Uh, so. Yeah, so, so I've been trying to develop the habit of reading at home. <laughs> yeah, um, well, it, sometimes I'll read in the morning, right, uh, or in the evening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and the very last one mm. is, which has everything to do with uh, our program, mm. uh, and that is, um, why do mm. you write? Mm. Why um, do you write? I, I, I write because I'm looking for beauty, right? I write because I'm looking for beauty. Of course, I, I, I do write because of the politics. Oh, yeah, I've also read the, the written political columns and stuff like that, right? Um, so, but I'll say primarily what I'm interested in is beauty, or in the case of the Tizita novel, of this Tizita novel, African beauty and aesthetics. And I can tell you a quick story of when, when, when the novel broke for me, right? Uh, I was commuting back and forth. It was a four-hour commute. And in that commute, I would listen to the Tizita and one day, after, after maybe two or three years of listening, uh, one day I was listening to Beza Walk, right? And then suddenly I started hearing the music, right? I, 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 started, I started hearing, even though, again, I don't speak Amharic, because at that point I had the epiphany, which I, I, I would assume a lot of people know, it's just that it was, it was new to me, that the human voice is an instrument, right? So I would say, I would say I'm addicted to those sort of moments when, when you're writing and then you start to see yeah, a Paul. What is it called? Assault to Paul Damascus. What is it? What, what is yes, it? indeed. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the magical yeah. moment when it yeah. all comes together. Uh, yeah. Well, um, we've had a marvelous audience, and this is the time for us to uh, stand, and maybe they'll acknowledge oh, us, you know, can and we we'll acknowledge can, them. Can, oh. can I say something quickly? Oh, do because I want to acknowledge um, uh, Jahazi, you know, and, and Ahmed. Yeah, because he's, he's the one who published this book in Kenya, but also with, with, with the idea of uh, we need to encourage, and, um, and by that I'm saying buy my book, but really also mean, you know, like we need to encourage um, independent publishing. And in the end, I think we, we need to get away from educational publishing, because I think that has really stifled uh, the growth of, of, of writing. But, but thank you, thank you so much, yeah. Right, so let's stand up and thank our audience. We can bow. So, uh, from the um, Mediatheque of the Alliance Française de Nairobi, uh, à la prochaine, till the next time. Mm -hmm.